So, good evening, Saurabh Agarwal, and uh, welcome to the first episode on Hobby Bharat. And a special thank you to you for agreeing to have a small interview with us and share your knowledge with the other collectors. Uh, <coughs> just to give an idea to the people watching our episode today, uh, may I please know that what all hobbies are you into? Yeah, thank you for uh, calling me in for the interview. and uh, i am very honored to have uh, to be here uh likewise hobbies you are talking about i am into bank notes and coins tie cards toy cards playing cards wine bottles locks and keys perfumes phone cards utility cards they are both different and stickers philately uh some unique philately stuff also and But cameras what do you mean Flatly, I mean stamps, stamps, postal stamps, okay. and uh, cameras. Just these. For now. Just these. I mean, you're giving a list, a huge list of uh, hobbies that you're into. <laughs> It's quite interesting about uh, what all you've told me. Uh, so, like, since you're telling me about so many hobbies which you're into, uh, mm -hmm. when and how did you start? When was your starting point, and from what did you start? Yeah. uh for for this i've started a long time back maybe in school days i remember uh my dad used to keep a few foreign banknotes because he went to iran and also to few more countries so i saw a few banknotes in his wallet and i got some curiosity and fascination from there then uh, a friend in my standard 11th class uh his dad was also uh, doing some business in germany so i got attracted to that also and i started just started with few bank notes from my dad's wallet and the curiosity grows and grows and grows and i am here in front of you okay. so basically what i understand is that you started with the bank notes right yes okay so why bank notes because you've given me such a huge list of hobbies that you're into mm -hmm. why specifically bank notes and what basically interest you in bank notes Also, I would like to ask you that you know, uh, is it that you collect each and every banknote, or are you specifically into some theme or something like that? Okay, so uh, yes, just for the banknotes, I didn't got attracted towards coins because I was just I saw banknotes in the wallet, mm -hmm. and I got attracted. Likewise, there were two, three, two to three countries in the wallet, like Canada, Singapore, and Iran. So. Canada Canadian notes have queens in it, colorful. The every denomination is colorful. For the Iran's, they have the portrait of the Pahlavi, just a portrait of the king. And in the Singapore note, they they used to have ship, a boat, and sometimes a bird. The post issues. So every note was different from each other. Likewise, in India, we have just a monotonous same colored notes, same same color notes. so i got attracted towards a colorful multi multi colored theme to the notes and the coins were not that fascinating because all the coin coins used to look same okay. similar to each other okay. so i just got attracted towards notes for this reason okay. and uh, what else you asked i asked you that uh, when it comes to notes so do you collect like anything and everything or do you have a more theme based collection <laughs> Yes, I usually collect theme based only because uh, I started with everything at the start. But right now I am just uh, having a theme based collection because every theme, every theme has a lot more variety. But it's a theme. If someone, if a layman sees that collection, he find he or she finds it unique. Uh, if you see a random collector, they will be collecting everything at one place, and there is no use of it. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so before I take this further, I just wanted to deviate from this. Uh, yeah. Like you said that you started collecting from your father's wallet onwards and all. So mm -hmm. as a beginner, what was the challenges you faced in your collection? Um, on the start of my collection in those days, I used to face like what to buy and where to buy mm -hmm. on the first place, uh, and. do just buying is the solution or we can also swap right so i've started with swapping at first because there is no value you just have to send your note to them and they will send you their note okay 
so the main major challenge i've got with the uh, guidance because i i was not having any teacher or guide to guide me to the right uh, line path of uh, collecting so just the guidance and if you are picking just a kind of few themes so just research on that first nowadays you we used to have online encyclopedias also so we learn from each and every encyclopedia but there was no one to guide me to reach to that encyclopedia true, true, true. very true yes yeah because you highlighted a very important aspect like even for me when i started collecting guidance number 1 was the biggest problem because in this uh, hobby or even some people call it like industry the big issue we have is that you know people will put 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 very big big posts like you know um, we should help each other and all but when it comes to actually helping others there are a lot of people who back off or will just ignore your questions so i agree with you on this aspect that you know uh, as a beginner we all face the biggest problem of guidance uh coming back to the notes thing which you were saying so uh what all specific themes do you collect in your notes collection one of the uh i am basically into world war themes and in those specific themes i am having french banknotes french and colonies russian banknotes of like world war 1 to world war 2 era and also specifically germany uh in the germany section i am having hitler's collection also and uh world war 1 and world war 2 in between of that era from 197 1912 to uh, 1945 era i am collecting that uh with that i am having some unique notes in it like uh maybe you can say german occupations or what an occupation is like germany capturing capturing other country during the war and that country is not issuing notes so germany is issuing their notes in their in that country that is the occupation money so so uh, can the term war money used be used for this what you are saying uh i don't think so because war money is like uh like if you are in the term war money war money is like the war is still going on right between the countries and the country that is captured is fighting for their own part okay so it, it was not the war money actually it, i i i am collecting war money but but that was not the war money the germany one was not the war money got it got it yeah uh, so now when you said hitler and you talk about germany so uh, like the question comes to mind is that you know in the west especially your us germany world war 2 is a very negative term although in asia and all it doesn't matter because it was not us but now coming to the specific theme of your german hitler i would like to really know that what interested you to get into german notes german notes uh if i can say just for the german notes uh the interesting part was that the uh, germany was center of attraction at the time of world war 2 as every country was fighting just to protect themselves from the german okay. german Germ- germany was the first one to start the world war mm-hmm. every country was willing to suppress only the germany and uh, germany was a center of europe also one side was europe the other side was eurasia other side was asia okay so even britishers sent uh, indian soldiers to egypt to fight the german soldiers true right and usa was fighting against germany russia was fighting on the other side british was fighting on the other side mm-hmm. so germany was a part of a center of attraction during that era and also germany was the first one to fell into hyperinflation where the money got devaluated at a speed of like 1 mark mark was a was a currency in germany 1 mark to 100 million mark in just a single day okay so 1 mark can be like 1 rupee which we have in india am i right yes 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 okay. just just in that country true okay so now uh, i've got a whole overview of it but now again my question is that why specifically german notes why the notes why the notes yeah why the notes yeah so why the notes 
actually germany uh, was every country issues their notes because just to mention on the note that uh, every note is designed to uh, express the cultural and uh, economic uh, things uh, used to happen or can be seen in that particular country likewise india is printing their note with uh, different sculptures and everything on a bank note why do we why do we print that on a bank note it's it's for us only the money is for us only so germany at the time when when the war was happening so there were like 32 different states in germany during the world war 2 world war 1 was started with 1800 states okay when when prussia was divided into uh, uh, was uh, uh, you can say incorporated 1800 states of prussia got incorporated into 32 states of germany that's interesting <laughs> okay so for for handling those 32 states it was still a very big task so they every and and at the time of 1923 when the inflation got got hit into germany during the war time uh, they started to print money in each and every state okay. their own money in every state not in, not for the country for every state's economy so that actually fascinates me because they are having a state using a silk bank note why they are using a silk bank note mm-hmm. that's an interest, interesting stuff even they are having a cardboard bank note a thick paper bank note a leather bank note different coins having different compositions or materials used to make a coin so it's a very fascinating yeah but like what you mentioned in all this thing is uh, something which actually captured my interest and that was like you know silk bank notes <coughs> so i mean that's quite interesting i i have never thought that you know there may be silk bank notes or what so can you mm-hmm. share some info information about this silk bank notes yeah i can so basically silk silk bank notes are uh, issued by two countries in the world the first one is yugoslavia and the second one is germany was germany actually and germany issued these bank notes uh, in the year of 1919 to 1922 just in the era of ending the post post world war 1 era and <clears throat> why your question is just for the why they used silk bank notes so silk bank notes were used in the state of bielefeld there is a state of bielefeld in was in in germany and uh, they were using it because uh, paper got short because if if uh, if the economy got hit by inflation the the uh, you can say money get devaluated by the time so there was a shortage of paper if i'm not wrong. shortage of paper 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 was not short paper got pricier Okay, got it. In just a single day. Okay, okay. So, uh, what 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 sources they they will be having to print a bank note because they have to run the whole the whole economy of the country. So they used anything to print a note or a currency so that they can use it for buying just a loaf of bread or milk or anything. Okay. To even give the salaries also okay. the wages. So that state, the Bielefeld state. was famous for their silk trade all over germany and asia they used to use the uh, silk road from china and everywhere and they supplied silk in the world so that state uh, was having a lot of silk in it and they used the thing that was in abundance in the state to print the note so basically they were silk traders silk traders and also if you see the note there uh i i'll share the image with uh, with shivam uh, to the viewers uh, if you see the note that note is having the inscription of women standing naked that that is just the significance as you read the history of bielefeld state uh, it was famous for prostitution the economy of the bielefeld state was uh, lying on the uh, uh, prostitution and the silk trade so when when you get rich he used to go to the women okay right. so that's that's the thing okay so what i understand is that you know that that particular area was uh, famous for silk trade and prostitution 
Yes. So that so they were actually advertising uh, their uh, thing, the silk. Also, they were advertising the prostitution to other states. Okay, so it was basically advertising, or it was something like what the West call as propaganda. Yeah, you can call it the propaganda, but not actually the propaganda. Propaganda is like you, you are telling other guy to uh, follow your thing. You are advertising what you are willing to sell. So they were basically advertising the ideology on the notes. They were uh, basically advertising that uh, Bealfield is issuing a silk note. Okay. That they have a lot of silk. So they are using silk for the printing the note, and also they are advertising that prostitution is uh, available here, so you can come to Bealfield and use it. Okay, so something like modern day Pattaya in Thailand we have. Yes. Okay. So <coughs> now, when you mention of uh, propagation or of advertisement, yeah. uh, a very layman question this will be that why and how were only notes used for this? If I want to advertise, I would put a billboard. I would put it in a newspaper. Why specifically were notes only used for advertisement or for propagation in the Germans uh, yeah. territory? That is nice question, actually. So it's it it will be very uh, fascinating to know that when the paper were get, get were getting uh, pricier and pricier by by the hour by the minute. So they try to uh, use notes because if you uh, if you see a, a newspaper, you get the newspaper every day, not every minute. Okay. You will you will just get the newspaper in the morning and you will read it, right? You will not going to read it again during the hour or during the day, but you have to use money every minute. True, True. daily okay. day to day so, activities require money. Yes, 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 yes. That is why uh, everything was printed on a note, and there were notes like a few notes were uh, printed on one side, the other side was remain uh, defaced or unifaced, a blank. Okay, you there were a few notes of uh, are blank, blank from the back. So well, they they used uh, the notes actually because one side is printed. How to print on the other? There they have to be some side. The, the advertisement has to be printed. So. So some notes were printed with the propaganda also. Okay, okay, that's nice. So uh, now I understand that it was for advertisement. It was unifaced. Uh, so were the note were these notes uh, circulated in a specific state, or were they circulated across the country? Like you mentioned, the silk notes being made in an area where there are silk traders. So mm -hmm. were those notes only? Uh, for local circulation, were it for circulation across the country, and also I would like to ask you that was paper money also being circulated at that time, or everything was kind of silk note in that period? Hmm. Uh, yes, actually, uh, likewise, current in the current situation, we print the we we print the currency for our country and also for the use of the other countries to trade money and all. But uh, during this period, likewise in the Germany only, why every state was willing to print their own notes? They were using just some, just that money in Germany only, because okay. it's a local currency. It's a local currency. It was not an international I currency. I mean to say that the notes were used across the country, across yes. the Germany. Only across the country. Yes. Okay. It was not. Uh, so no, no, no. It was not the international currency. No, no, I mean to say it was not limited to one province or one state. Or no, 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 no. It no. was across the country. It was across the country, not out of Germany. Okay, okay. Yes. So, uh, were paper currencies also being used at that time? Yes, paper currencies were also used. Uh, other compositions were also used. Other compositions. Okay, so this is quite yes. interesting that, you know, uh, you just mentioned that other components, other materials were also being used. So, uh, can you just highlight that what material were used and share something if you have in your collection? Yeah, uh, the basically uh, the paper was used, a normal paper. Mm -hmm. Even uh, tissue papers were also used, but uh, those notes didn't exist up to now. They got they damaged. They got, yeah, they didn't survive. And uh, 
for for other than paper there is having a thick paper it's not the cardboard there was also cardboards there were thick paper you will just hold that note but it will not fold okay it's stiff paper so that's thick paper and the other ones are uh, you can say cardboard it's a cardboard like you you are getting a metro ticket or a bus ticket of that cardboard that's a stick hard cardboard okay 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 so but but those notes were like this much small not bigger than that the cardboard notes were this much small okay. i'll uh, i hope uh, i'll share the pictures with shivam uh, you you can see what all cardboard notes that that existed in that era okay and w- was this uh... use of other materials only limited to notes or was it also used for coinage as well yes uh, coins were also made up of aluminum copper nickel nickel not actually copper nickel uh, copper nickel was not uh, at that time so much famous and uh, was very costly aluminum zinc iron and tin were used uh, very commonly uh, and copper was also used uh i read somewhere that even porcelain was used am i right i mean i, I yes uh, it was it was just uh, one state out of 32 that used porcelain okay okay yes because there was they were having porcelain crockery and everything pottery pottery stuff they were using in our trade economic trade okay. from that state so uh, was this a one off event like only germany did it or did any other country also make coins of different material during the world war or maybe even after that era um uh, i don't think so because uh, i guess some of the countries uh, used uh, different materials uh, in in present times also likewise uh, there is a country called transnistria Uh, near to the russian uh, republic and uh, they were they issued uh, plastic coins they were not actually plastic coins the layman term is plastic but the uh, technical term is composite plastic so it's a composite material uh, very hard plastic having grooves on the surface having micro lettering so it's kind of um, more fascinating to have that piece of art Is, is call this, it a piece of art. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but is this the uh, coins that were issued somewhere in 2014? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. They are having so four denominations. Did they come in? Uh, they they were having four denominations: one, three, five, and ten rubles. Okay. Different colors and different shapes. Okay. So, uh, like, just uh, again, for out of curiosity, I'm asking you. So these coins were minted for a limited time, or they are still in circulation in that country today? No, these these are not circle. These are not still in circulation. Yes, they were they were used in 2014, and uh, you can say it was ended in 2014 only. Okay, so one year because it was plastic, okay. and plastic do not have a better shelf life than a material than a than a metal component. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. I believe that Transnistria is a very small country somewhere between Moldova, Ukraine. Yes, I yes. So I mean that country is uh, issuing plastic coins. Quite interesting. Uh, yes. Not to mention those, I've heard about plastic notes, but mm. plastic coins is a relatively new concept in my mind. Even the ones you mentioned about porcelain, I guess that was for Germans. Germans. So they right. also issued it, and uh, I guess. Four, four, five denominations, or was there more? Yes, I guess more than eight to ten denominations they have from Phoenix. Like you can say, Indian currency में पैसा जिसे बोलते हैं, वहाँ पे they call it Phoenix. So from Phoenix to Mark, Mark is the highest currency in Germany. Was the highest. Right now they are having Mark, but they are not having that Mark. Got. It. So you know, coming from the concept of war money, you know, we went to Germany. we went yeah. to the world war 2 era uh i cannot get this out of my mind but right now we have a very big war going on in the world in europe that is russian war with uh, ukraine so the question which comes to my mind is that is there any concept of war money or anything similar which is happening in ukraine which you would like to share with our viewers yeah i can say yes we have a war money mm-hmm. yeah 
it was not into circulation right now but it was used in uh, 2020 to 2021 2022 okay pre pre war uh, pre war scenario it was used okay. when when russia captured the eastern part of ukraine that is called the donetsk okay and uh, they they actually uh, if i if i tell you the whole story about it so the story is like they uh, they actually forced Uh, the civilians of ukraine to use their own currency russian yeah, rubles russian rubles and the civilian said why why will i well why will we use it mm-hmm. we are still part of ukraine you are forcefully capturing us mm-hmm. so they denied to use the currency so they actually took the ukrainian uh, haven and they've affixed a, a hologram on the note I'll share the picture with you. You just show it to the viewers. I'll add it later and show it to the audience. Yes, and uh, for if you if you see the note, the, the whole note is of Ukraine, and the on on the obverse side of the note, on the left side, they've affixed the hologram, and the hologram is in the uh, color of uh, if you if you tilt and see the hologram, it's in the color of Russian. flag and also there it's having uh, the emblem of russia on it interesting okay so this, yes. is, this is something like you know uh, we hear about psychological warfare so this is yes. what i understand is put a sticker on the notes yes and uh, yes. they're playing a psychological game with the yes that russia actually captured the ukrainian currency got it got it they so they, instead of printing new money they just took the money from circulation put a stamp yes. or a sticker over it and put it yes. in the circulation yes that's quite an interesting thing i mean in the news or in uh, you know articles i've never ever actually read anything like this this mm. is interesting uh you know i see that you are quite loaded with information over here <laughs> i get 100 questions when you tell me one answer Uh, so taking it forward from here i would like to ask you that you know when it comes to war like you said war money so are there any coins printed with maybe weapons or is it only limited to famous leaders like stalin and you know the president prime minister series so do we have any coins which have uh, weapons or military equipment on them yes yes we we have uh, actually in the uh, in the war era only of the russian ukraine war era Uh, we can still call it the war era we, uh, st- a cold war is still going on okay. and uh, it's during cold war it's a hot war kind of a thing <laughs> so so uh, in 2020 russia issued uh, a few uh, a set of uh, no you can you can't call it the war money but uh, they issued uh, some coins having uh, m- uh, arms on it a uh, few guns rifles tanks cannons okay. and fighter jets aeroplanes they're having everything on the coin so before before i uh, before you say anything else were these coins just minted with photos of the weapons or was there any were the commemorative coins or they were commemorating something was it something like that yes 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 they were commemorating the designer of that particular weapon or the particular flying jet they were commemorating that that designer Uh, but it was minted during that time, so <laughs> it's related to the war only. Yeah, so they were just showing off. Right. They were just showing off what we've got. Got it. Got it. You can say that. You know, this has been a very interesting uh, conversation with you. We started off with notes, getting into war money, and now we have come down to you know coins with weapons on them, which is really very interesting. This <laughs> reminds me that I guess even Poland had issued. Uh, a note, if I'm not wrong, because I'm not into notes. So you have yes, to... yes, yes, yes. Recently, Poland has issued a twenty slosh note. Okay. Uh, it it was not meant for circulation actually. Okay. It is a commemorative note uh, of liberation, and uh, there was having uh, a binocular. In, the first army man was having a binocular, mm-hmm. holding uh, on this level, and uh, the other army man was having a rifle here. So it's a beautiful note. It comes with a folder also. So we can say that those notes were only for the collectors of that collection. Yes. It yes. It's not for circulation. No. 
Okay, so what I'll do is that I believe I am very sure you have this in your uh, collection. So you just share yeah. the pic with me, and later yeah, on I'll share you. this video so that the viewers can also see. Uh, now the thing is this that you know, I understand or uh, after talking to you is that you know you're loaded with information. You have a variety of things in your collection, although theme based. But I do understand that you have a variety of it. Uh, so I would like to like you know ask you that. Would you like to share anything unique in your collection with the audience? I mean, you can give me the info now, and we can put in the photos for the audience to view later. Sure, why not? Um, I have three to four pieces. Uh, if you find it unique, it will be unique. Okay. So the first one I need to tell you is from Germany. There's a coin having a plastic ring between. two portions the outer ring is of metal the center core is of metal okay. but the space in between is having a polymer ring interesting okay that ring is transparent translucent you can say okay. and the ring is colored there are five to six different color rings five to different different coins right right i guess i have seen this coin it has a very beautiful blue polymer ring inside yes, yes, yes. in red also. so there are different colors like black blue orange red cyan okay. green so there are six five to six coins in that okay. series and every coin uh, actually commemorates the uh, some some things something because it was a uh, commemorative of climate series again for collectors that is it was not yes for again for collectors but yes they were issued in circulation oh, they, they were, were usually minted okay. usually minted in millions okay okay that's interesting and, yes uh, so they are still in circulation in germany yes they are still in circulation okay okay right. and, and uh, this this is the first one the second one i'll feel i you, you all will be happy to know that there is a hindu god on a coin and a note I Lord Ganesha, Lord, Lord Ganesha, right, right, Lord yes. Ganesha. Okay. Yes, yes. Lord Ganesha or Ganpati, we call it. Okay. And uh, Thailand issued a coin having Lord Ganesha. As you know, or maybe don't know, that Thailand is also following Hinduism, and uh, they are having temples, temples in the country. So they have issued a coin with Lord Ganesha on it. And there is one more country issued a note, a bank note. Uh, of twenty thousand rupee in Indonesia, as Indonesia is also following Hinduism, so they've printed Ganesha, Lord Ganesha, on their note. They've commemorated Lord Ganesha's existence on a note. Okay, so when it comes to Thailand, if I'm not wrong, is it that bi metal coin ten baht? Well, yes. In it, and it's really very beautiful. It's a very yes. beautiful coin. Yes. 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 Okay. and anything else because you know my hunger for information from you is not satisfied <laughs> so is there anything else unique in your uh, collection which you would like to share because uh, i do remember long back you show you talking about uh, a, a small stamp size note if i'm not wrong yes okay. actually i wanted to place that note on the top of everything but i want to talk it about right now because that is the best of the best that note comes under guinness book of world records mm -hmm. it's the smallest world smallest bank note issued in 1917 in post world war 1 era issued by romania and it's the smallest denomination of that three note series mm -hmm. having the denomination 10 bani so uh, why was the note so small that guinness world record gave it a thumbs up yeah because uh, when the during the war time as we know as we have talked about that uh, germany got into the paper crisis mm -hmm. money devaluation and everything so all over the world the money is short okay during the war time everything got short mm -hmm. so they have to print the currency so when they have to print the currency they use a small part also so so they printed a smaller size note but it was a note it was it was you can say it is a paper but for me it's a thick paper it's a very stiff paper you can bend it or what exactly if it yes, you can bend it 
we can also because it's a paper it's not a plastic it because if it's a thick paper yeah. it will not be if you, if you try to fold it it will break off okay 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 that's so, yes. so it's a very hard so it's, it's a thick paper, paper yes okay that's interesting so you yeah. know uh, like i don't know where to take it on from here because you're giving me new new information with every next question i ask you and i'm very sure that the audience here too will be having a lot of questions to ask from you in mind uh so i drag that thing here and if someone wants to you know uh, view your collection or wants to connect with you how can they do it ha huh, they can they can actually uh, visit my website uh, please give the link in the description box uh, and uh, we have a youtube channel instagram page okay. and we actually display our collection sometimes okay. uh, in the local exhibitions used to happen and uh, that's all i guess instagram is like my uh, kind of a rough page you will feel <laughs> very noisy there so uh, this my website will be easy so to the viewers who are watching this if you want to connect with uh, mr sora vagarwal you can go to his website which is i guess www.charismaticworld.com i yeah. mentioned the link uh, in the description he has an instagram page he is also a youtuber which i came to know just right now and uh, whenever he has the luxury of time he displays his collection at exhibitions so you guys can you know follow this and try to get in touch with him i hope this person does not give you a lot of knowledge because i will not give me more knowledge for more knowledge for more information in the next episode uh, so before we wind up sorab uh, seeing your whole journey from where you started challenges you faced and how you've been going which is really fantastic i would really like to ask you that do you want to give any message to the new collectors around these days obviously i can and it has to be given because someone has to guide you to a right direction so uh, basically a collector has to first think and know what he has to collect he or she has to collect don't collect randomly everything because you can find everything at any price okay you just have to pay the price and you can get it simply follow what you like what you can cherish after 10 years after 20 years okay likewise me i can cherish germany so i continuously collect germany even if i if I, even if i am not getting one note a year okay still still i cherish that collection i have so you choose a theme according to your daily life or your profession or your passion choose a theme accordingly if if you are a guitarist if you are an ins- instrumentalist choose a theme having a guitar or a music instrument on a background or a coin if you are if you are a it professional choose something like a computer and a banknote there are banknotes having computers on it okay that's very interesting i mean also if you are a scientist yeah. if you are a scientist mm-hmm. if you are an astronomist astrologist you will find stars planets sci- scientific professors on it on a banknote albert einstein on a banknote that's it So with this, the audience, I would like to tell you that uh, Mr. Saurav Agarwal has given me more content for the future episodes. So I am not going to wind up with one episode with you. I will definitely be dragging you for more episodes. I'll wake you up, even if it's at two in the night. Uh, but coming to the message which you have sent to the collectors, it's really a beautiful message. Because yeah, I would also like to you know agree with you on this that I have seen collectors who come in with a lot of excitement they do not do any research work they just buy whatever they they can and uh, basically spend their money without research and then end up you know having a very confused collection or sometimes even having a loss because you know they do not know the market rates and then they will buy it at a higher price and then they'll regret it later so yes uh, dear viewers dear audience please do do a research on your uh, what you want to collect do it systematically if you miss a particular note or coin at a given moment do not worry you will get 
more chances in future all you need is money do not overburden your parents do not overburden yourself it's just a hobby and enjoy it connect with people like saurav agarwal who's filled with a lot of information <laughs> and you and you also connect with you all. i am still in the learning phase sir so connect with mr saurav agarwal those guys who are into foreign currencies and uh, let's let's make this hobby a beautiful place having said that saurav agarwal thank you for coming uh, it was a thank you so much for having me and you have given me so much so much of content ideas that i will be seeing you again in future for more episodes thank you i so will much. be lucky to have one more time again in your videos